Welcome to worship. I am going to light our chalice and you can light your chalices along with us at home and say the chalice lighting words. We light this chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is the church of the open mind. This is the church of the loving heart. This is the church of the helping hands. So our song today is Spirit of Life. And as you might have remembered last week, we began learning the hand signals um, which um, Kat and Alice showed us. And we are going to watch the video of Kat and Alice and the words to Spirit of Life are in your chat. And let's practice along. <laughs> lovely, lovely song. And I am very excited to share with you the tool in our toolbox for today. We're just going to look in the toolbox. And the tool that we have today is the bubble level. It is also called the spirit level. And this was my favorite tool in my family's toolbox when I was a child. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen a spirit level or a, bullet, a bubble level in your family's toolbox, but this tool is used to see if things are level, if surfaces are truly horizontal. And people use them, carpenters use them, like if they're making a table to see if the table is level and bricklayers use them to to show whether the bricks are level and you can also do it vertically and to see if walls are plumb. Um, and it's a pretty important tool to make sure that you're making things right. And I love the fact that it's also called a spirit level because we are talking about spiritual tools this summer. And the reason that it was called the spirit level is that the liquid inside the level where the bubble is was alcohol and the word for another word for alcohol is spirits but i think of spirit as like spirit of life um so this is a way of seeing whether something is balanced or level and it's really important in our spiritual lives that we're balanced or level. And one of the things that can put us most out of balance is if we do things to hurt other people's feelings, right? That makes us feel um, unbalanced. I know that when I hurt someone's feelings, um, until I make it right, I just, it makes me feel sad and I also feel uneasy. And making it right is one of the most important things that we can do to keep our relationships healthy and in balance. And an old fashioned word for making it right in relationships 
is the word atonement. And atonement means making amends or fixing things or repairing things. Now, when I think of atonement in relationships, the first thing that we can do to fix it or to make it right when we've hurt someone else is to say that we're sorry. An apology is the first step in atonement. And not, it has to be a heartfelt apology, right? It can't be sorry, not sorry. Or it can't be like if someone makes you say you're sorry and you're like, sorry. That's not, that does not make it right. That is not an atonement. Um, but um, a sorry, a heartfelt sorry, like, I am so sorry. Really, really, I really didn't mean to do that. So that's the first step in, in atonement. But sometimes sorry is actually not enough. Sometimes you de new, need to do more to make it right. So for example, if your little sister is building a tall tower of blocks and you don't realize that she is building a precarious tower of blocks and you come bouncing into the room and shake the floor and the tower falls, the first thing that you should say is, I'm so sorry. And you can tell that she is upset by the expression on her face. It might be crushed, it might be angry. And if you say, oh, I'm so sorry, sometimes that's enough. But sometimes the angry, sad face still remains and you know you need to do more. So one of the things that you can do if you've knocked a tower over is to help the person build the tower back or to help them clean up the blocks. Or if they're crying, you could read them a story, right? There are so many different things that you can do to make it right. I think it's even harder to make it right when, you, when what you did to hurt another person wasn't an accident, right? Like knocking over someone's blocks and you didn't mean to, that was an accident. But what about the thing that you do that's mean that you meant to do? Um, like for example, if you yell at your sister and you say, you poopy head, right? That's not an accident. The words you poopy head does not come out of your mouth by accident. That's something that you meant to say and you meant to say it on purpose and you meant to, to be mean actually. And that is a harder thing to make atonement or make amends for because the person knew that you meant to be, um, you meant to be mean. So sometimes saying you're sorry after you realize that it wasn't a very nice thing to say and you didn't really mean it, you can say I'm sorry. But sometimes you need to do something to make it better that's more than just saying I'm sorry. And it's always different in every situation. It depends on the person, what you have to do to make it right. So one thing you could do to make it right is to make a commitment to yourself not to lose your temper and call your sister a poopy head again. And, you know, that might be a thing that would really be a good atonement or making amends. I've been thinking about how few stories there are about people saying I'm sorry and um, making amends. And you know the twisted fairy tales like where you want to go and change the story to make it a better story. And a story that I think could really use some improvement with some atonement and making amends is the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? because Goldilocks does something really wrong. She's like super rude. She comes into their house, breaks their things, eats their food, falls asleep in their bed. People she doesn't even know, right? The three bears. And when they come into the house and they see her, instead of saying, I'm sorry, and maybe like washing the dishes and helping to fix the broken chair and, you know, apologizing, she goes screaming into the sunset and she runs away and never, ever tries to make it better. And I think that there are a lot of stories about people um, running away, because at first it's easier to run away, but if you care about people, it actually, it is better to do the hard work at the beginning and say you're sorry and try to make amends. And um, 
That's one of the hardest things to do, but it makes you spiritually strong. It makes your relationships in your family and your community stronger when you are willing to make repairs and make it right. And that's something that, you know, it's not just in our families and in our neighborhoods and in our schools, but also in our country. Like one of the things that we are really trying to figure out how to make amends for is for the legacy of slavery, which is centuries old, which hurt the enslaved people in our country and their ancestors. And we're trying to figure out as a country how to make it right how to atone for it, not just saying you're sorry, but fixing it. So I would like you to think about the importance of a spirit level in your own life this week. Think about how to make amends and how to be, how to make, how to say you're sorry and how to make it right. And as Alan breaks us into our breakout rooms, I would like you to share joys and sorrows and then I would like you to answer this question. I'd like you to think about this and then answer. Is it easier to say, I'm sorry, or is it easier to say, I forgive you? So we've been talking about what we need to do to make it right when we do things wrong, but we haven't talked about, and we'll talk about someday soon, how hard it is to learn to forgive people. So I'd like you to think about which thing is easier or harder for you. And then we will come back in a little bit to extinguish our chalice.